comes to the word eschatology, what comes to mind? For some of you, nothing, because you ain't never heard that word before. For some of you, you think the end of the world. Some of you guys think about that Left Behind movie that came out when many of us were kids. Some of you guys think of the millennial reign of Jesus. Some of you guys think about something called the Great Tribulation. These are all right thoughts about what the term eschatology means, but they're all Thin as it regards to strengthening us in our Christian faith. It's not that those things are wrong, and that eschatology has no bearing on those things, they're right, but those things in and of themselves really don't do much to bolster your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. And I think it's because oftentimes we miss the forest for the trees when we're talking about the concept of eschatology. Eschatology, rightly understood, is not just the doctrine of the end times, that's what the word means, end times, the study of the end times, but it's really the doctrine of Christian hope as it pertains to the end times. Romans chapter 8 is a very significant chapter when it comes to the end times. Listen to Romans chapter 8, verse 18. He says, For I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worth comparing with the glory that is going to be revealed to us. This eschatological hope in that passage. Paul is saying that our present day trials, tribulations, troubles, they all lose their sting in light of the glory that's to come. Because Paul knows who wins at the end. Paul knows that Jesus has victory in the end, therefore all the trials of this world will be defeated one day. Because Paul knows who's gonna win at the end. Jesus is gonna carry his saints all the way to victory over sin, over Satan, and over death. Colossians chapter two, verses 14 through 15 says that the consequences of sin are erased in the person of Christ Jesus. Hebrews chapter two says that Satan is destroyed by the power of Christ and that the fear of death is crushed in light of his work. Second Timothy chapter one literally says that death itself has been abolished. In fact, in Revelation chapter 20, the scripture seeks that both death and Satan will be tossed into the lake of fire. See, everything changes when it's viewed in light of who wins. Everything changes in light of victory. Fear is crushed in light of victory. When you know you're gonna win, you don't sweat the small stuff. Hopelessness dissolves in light of victory. And you can walk in power and in confidence in the person of Jesus because you know that if you're in him, then you ultimately win. Paul is saying in that verse that our present day trials, tribulations, and troubles, they tend to lose their sting in light of the glory that's to come. Paul can say that because he knows who wins at the end. He knows that in the end, Christ Jesus reigns as a victor. And when you live your life in light of the one who wins, then everything changes. When you know that you're gonna win at the end, you don't sweat the small stuff anymore. When you know you're gonna win at the end, you don't walk in fear, you don't walk in defeat. You walk with confidence and boldness because you know that you're in the one who wins. You're in Christ, the victor. And so you walk victoriously rather than defeated. Not only that, but Paul says that when we live in light of the glory that's to come in Christ Jesus, AKA when we walk in hope in that, then we can live our life in victory and no longer in defeat. At the end of the day, eschatology is all about the truth we find in Colossians chapter 1, verse 20. That Jesus, by the power of his blood, is and will reconcile everything to himself, things in heaven and things on earth, making peace by the blood of his cross. At the end, eschatology is all about what we find in Romans chapter 8, verse 19 through 22, where he says, For the creation eagerly awaits with anticipation for, the, for God's sons to be revealed. For the creation was subjected to futility, not willingly, but because of him who subjected it, in hope that the creation itself would also be set free from the bondage to decay, to the glorious freedom of God's children. For we know that the whole creation has been groaning together with label pains, until now. 
Guys, everything will be redeemed at the end. Final justice is found in the person of Jesus. So all those injustices that we feel and see around us all the time will find its final place and final justice will be served in the person of Christ. For those of you who have body ailments and, and physical sickness, no longer will you have to deal with the pain that you feel every day in the person of Christ at the end of the age. You can look to the end of the age with joy and with anticipation because you know that one day that pain is going to be gone. There's no more tears, there's no more crying at the end of the age. No more rejection, no more trauma, no more set tripping in order to feed your family. No more code switching in order to fit in. For all those who endure are eternally secure in Christ. All of these things are found in the doctrine of eschatology. Eschatology is more than are you premillennial or postmillennial? Are you amillennial? Are you a partial preterist or a full preterist? Are you post-trib or pre-trib? All of those things are good to study, but they are theologically inadequate to give you the substance and hope to endure through trial. Oftentimes, we get overly concerned about when is Jesus coming back? And guys, guess what? We don't know when Jesus is coming back. We find that in Matthew 24, Matthew 25, 2 Peter chapter 3. We can't allow these things to take our eyes off of the Jesus-centered hope that when he does return, in whichever fashion he decides to come, at whatever time he decides to come, that Jesus is coming to redeem those who are ready and waiting for his arrival. That's the hope we find in our eschatological theology. That at the end of the age, he is coming to bring final salvation for all who believe. That should be the motivation behind our study of eschatology. Not to figure out dates and times that we'll never agree upon, but to remember and rely upon the reality that when he comes back, all things will be made new. This is what he says in Revelation chapter 21. Allow it to minister to your soul. He says, then I heard a loud voice from the throne. Look, God's dwelling is with humanity and he will live with them. They will be his peoples and God himself will be with them and he will be their God. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes. Death will be no more. Grief, crying, pain will be no more because the previous things have passed away. This is your eschatological hope. In verse five, he says this. Then the one seated on the throne said, look, I am making everything new. He also said, write this because these words are faithful and true. Then he said to me, it is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. I will freely give to the thirsty from the, from the spring of the water of life. Guys, eschatology is God driving all of history toward its ultimate goal, restoration in the person of Christ Jesus. And that means the restoration of you and your circumstances, all by the blood of the Lamb. Let this Jesus-centered eschatological theology give you hope to endure.